Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can deform pretty much any plane, but we're going to use it for graphene. So very quickly, I'm going to model some graphene. If you want a more step-by-step -step process, go ahead and check out my video on that linked in the description. But we'll start by hitting X to delete the default cube, Shift A to add in a plane. I'll hit S to scale it, and we'll go for about 10 times the scale. Tab into edit mode, right click and subdivide, and I'm going to go with a very significant number of cuts. Let's say, 50, mm, let's say 60, 60 cuts. Tap back out of edit mode, come to edit, preferences, add-ons, and make sure that you have the tissue add-on installed. Once that's done, come back, hit F3, and we're going to look for convert to dual mesh. And this is just how you make the graphene very quickly. We're gonna wait while it does this. Tab into edit mode, and you can see we now have all of these wonderful hexagons. I'll hit seven on my number pad to come in top view. A to select everything, R, Z, and 45 to rotate 45 degrees, then S, Y, and 0.6 to scale that in so I have these nice, perfect hexagons. From here, I'm going to hit 3, so I'm selecting only faces, Alt A to deselect everything, and now I will drag a box out to get the graphene plane that I want to work with. This is pretty good. From here, I will hit Control I to invert that selection, X, and delete the faces, and now we have our graphene plane. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control A and apply the scale, and we can now start deforming this. So this is where the cool part of the tutorial starts. What we're going to do is just you choose an object to deform with. It could be anything really, but I'm going to use a sphere. So Shift A and add in a UV sphere. We don't need to really do anything with this, so we'll just shade it smooth, hit G, Z, and bring it up. And the way that we're actually going to achieve this is with the physics engines in Blender. And then later on, we'll change it out for shape keys for animation. But grab your sphere, come to this tab right here, which is physics properties, and I'm going to add two things. First, I'm going to add a rigid body. I'm going to keep this as active, check animated, uncheck dynamic, and then realistically, because this is a sphere, I can use sphere for the shape. And these are pretty much fine. The rest of the settings we don't need. We're also going to add a collision. And collision just means that it's going to be able to interact with this plane. So we're combining rigid body physics with collisions. And we're going to do that by adding a rigid body to our plane. This one is going to be passive. It will also be animated. We can use convex hull and deform. These are all fine. But now we're going to add soft body physics to our plane. The only thing that we're going to do here is come down to field weights and bring the gravity down to zero. So now what's going to happen is if we grab our sphere and you can see we're on frame one, I'm just going to hit I and add a location keyframe. From there, I'm going to move ahead any number of frames that I want, but I usually like to give myself a little bit of room here. So let's say to frame a hundred, then I will hit G Z, bring my sphere down until it is just about here on my plane. You can go further if you want the effect to be more or less, but if you go too far, it will go through. So I'm going to go just about here, hit I, and add another location keyframe. Now, I'm pretty confident that you have to actually hit this little button, jump to endpoint, and that should reset and actually start doing all the calculations. But you'll see now, if I were to just go ahead and hit play, it's actually going to calculate, and when it interacts with the plane, it is just a deform to the plane. So if I were to hide that sphere, you can see now I have this deformation, and I could add extra spheres, repeat that process. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that with say a cube. I'll make the sphere visible again. I'm on frame one, I'll add in a cube. Bring that up, G, Z, G, and X, and just we'll make it deform over on this side. Now, same thing. For the interacting object, I need a rigid body constraint, active, dynamic, no, animated, yes. Convex hull, well, we could use convex hull, but we're gonna use box, because it is obviously a box. And then again, we'll add collision. So once more, I for location, and then we'll jump ahead this time, say 50 frames. We'll hit G, Z, bring this down and move it to just about here, and I and add location again. Now again, we're resetting everything so it does all the calculation. Go ahead and hit play. You can see there's our cube interacting, boom. There's our sphere interacting, just like that. And you can see there's some rippling here. You can change the actual rigid, or the soft body physics, in the plane by messing with the pull, push, and bending as well as plastic to some extent. And this will allow you to sort of change the effect. We'll look at all of that in just a second. 
But now if I were to hide this cube and hide this sphere, you could see this is how our plane has deformed. So let's briefly take a look at how some of these settings can make a difference. So we'll go back to the first frame, make both of these visible again. We'll actually delete the cube because we don't want to have to deal with too many objects. And now grabbing our sphere, let's take a look at our settings. So push, pull, let's drop these to 0.1 and 0.1. Now hit this little button, press play again, and we'll see what happens to our plane this time. So you can see that's much more focused, if you will. The sphere is really much more of a obvious indentation in one spot now. If that was the effect you wanted, this would be the settings that you would go for, just lower on the push and pull. Let's reset it again, visualize our sphere, and bring the push and pull up to the max value, which is essentially one. So we'll just type one for both, and it will give us 0.999. And now go ahead and now you can see that that effect is being spread out over a much larger area so it's a bit more of a subtle deformation you could have this as well so we'll hide that again you can again see all of this effect taking place over a larger area i actually like this this is the one that i'm going to go with and so i'll show you how i set this up for animation when I'm doing an animation of something like this, I don't want to have to let the physics do it every time. It's a little bit slow. It's a little bit taxing. So once I've got it the way that I'm happy with, because once you change or once you do what I'm about to do, you cannot undo it. Come to the modifier tab or the modifier properties tab, and you see these options of apply and apply a shape key. If this is the way you want it, and it's like this is the final deformation, just use this and hit apply. But if you want, you can animate it by applying as shape key. And now it looks like it's all gone, but if we actually go to the object data properties, even without the sphere, without the physics now, what we can do is we can grab this little tab here for soft body. And if I bring this value from zero all the way to one, you can see that effect start to appear. So I have control over where it's going to be. And I have control over everything basically up to a certain point. So I'll show you what this looks like as final graphing by just adding the last set of modifiers. First, I'll make sure that I actually apply the scale. So I did apply the scale, that's good. So let's add the modifiers. We're gonna add a wireframe. We'll make sure we have boundary checked. And we're gonna add a bevel with two segments. And let's see what we have here for the wireframe, 0.02. So we'll go with a bevel of 0 0.005. Then we will right click, shade smooth. And this is actually nice smooth deformed graphene that you could use for all kinds of different science animations maybe you actually want to show deformation of graphene or a regular plane by impact with an object maybe you want to do that kind of physics effect of looking at a black hole i really am not an expert in that area so i can't comment effectively on what that phenomenon is but of gravity distortions in space this is a very, very easy way to do that. It gives you a lot of control over the look that you're going for by combining all of these physics engines and then simplifies it down at a final level to give you a nice way to just control this animation with a single toggle, zero to one, watching this sort of thing evolve over time. Now, I realize that this is a little bit more of a, an effect and something that you might actually be more inclined to use in animation rather than in a still frame figure. However, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. Go use it to make some figures. And until next time, you have yourself a great old day.